Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to go over the complete Bible timeline primarily for anyone who does not speak English. Just so you know, my videos now have subtitles in 12 languages. If you're interested in that, you can click on the gear icon in the lower right corner of this video to find the language that you want, and then click on the CC. So we're going to move from left to right, top to bottom. The first event in the top left corner is the head of the image, as explained in Daniel chapter 2, verses 32 and 38. That is also the lion, which is the first beast in Daniel 7, 4. Under that, it says Babylon, which Daniel 2 and 7 explain is the lion and head. Daniel 2, 37 and 38 says Nebuchadnezzar is the head, and Nebuchadnezzar became the king of Babylon in 605 BC. Babylon is the mouth, as explained in Revelation 13, verse 2, and is also the first king, as explained in Revelation 17, 10. Next, the chest of the image explained in Daniel 2, 32 and 39. And that is also the bear, which is the second beast in Daniel 7, 5. And it's also the ram, explained in Daniel 8, verses 4 and 20. Daniel 8.20 tells us directly that the ram is Persia, which is the second king in Revelation 17.10, and the feet of the beast in Revelation 13.2. The first Persian empire came to power in 550 BC. Next, we have the belly, as explained in Daniel 2 verses 32 and 39, and that is also the leopard in Daniel 7, 6, and the goat of Daniel 8, verses 5 and 21. That was the Greek Empire and the first king, Alexander the Great, as explained in Daniel 8, 21. That was also the third king of Revelation 17, 10. Daniel 8, 22 explains that Alexander's kingdom was split into four sections, the four heads of the leopard. The first was the Seleucid Empire, which included modern-day Syria. The second was Antigonid Macedon, which is modern-day Greece. The third was the Ptolemaic Dynasty, which is modern-day Egypt. And the fourth was Adelid Anatolia in modern-day Turkey. The Greek Empire under Alexander the Great came into power from 336 to 330 BC. You'll notice this section right here says, in latter time of their kingdom. That refers to Daniel 8 verses 21 through 25, which says that in the latter time of the four kingdoms, when the transgressors come to the full, a king of fierce countenance will rise up and by peace destroy many. The latter time of those four kingdoms occurred at the end of the Turkish Empire, which reigned from 1299 CE to 1923. And we'll look at that in a minute. Next on the timeline, we have the legs of iron, as explained in Daniel 2 verses 33 and 40. That is the terrible beast in Daniel 7, verses 7 and 23. We know that was the Roman Empire, which came to power in 27 BC after the Greek Empire. However, I don't have that specific year on here. The green box at the bottom says 70 CE, Jerusalem Temple Destroyed, First Watch. That is referenced in Matthew 24, 2 the destruction of the temple, Luke 21.20, Jerusalem surrounded by armies, and Luke 12.37 and 38, the first watch on Jesus' timeline. The Roman Empire consisted of three heads, the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Holy Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire came after the four heads of the leopard, so the Western Roman Empire was head five, as explained in Revelation 13 and 17, and it was also king four, as explained in Revelation 17.10. The Eastern Roman Empire was head six, 
as explained in Revelation 13 and 17, and it was also King 5, as explained in Revelation 17.10. The Holy Roman Empire was Head 7 and King 6, as explained in Revelation 17.10. There are a few different ways to look at this, which we'll discuss in a minute. Below the Eastern Empire, you'll see a line pointing down to the second green box, which says 685 to 691 CE, Dome of the Rock, Second Watch. That's a reference to Mark 13, verses 14 through 19, the abomination of desolation that stands where it ought not, and Luke 12, 37 and 38, the second watch on Jesus' timeline. Just above that, it says 686 CE, Revelation 12 sign. That's a reference to Revelation 12, verses 1 through 5, which describes a celestial configuration in the sky that occurred both in 686 CE during the building of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem and also in 2012 during the building of the One World Trade Center in New York City. We'll cover that in a minute. But first, notice there were exactly 1290 years from 686 BC to 685 CE. And remember, there was no year zero. That's a reference to Daniel 12, 11, and also Ezekiel 4, 5, and 6, and Numbers 14, 34, which gives us the day for a year principle. Under that, it says Daniel 11, verses 1 through 31. That's a very complex timeline that is explained in the Daniel 11 video, which I have not posted subtitles for yet, but will do as soon as I get a chance. The events described in Daniel 11, verses 1 through 31 span from just before the rise of the first Persian Empire, until the setting up of the Dome of the Rock in 685 CE. The king of the north at that time was the Roman Empire, and I explained in that video that the dome is a Roman temple. Its measurements match almost exactly the measurements of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is Roman, and the Muslim religion was created by the Roman Empire. Again, it's a complex study. I'll try to post a translatable version of that soon. The cloud that you see at 685, the setting up of the abomination, says flee, and the line after that says 1260 years, Christian Empire, 756 to 2016. That is a reference to Revelation 11.3, Revelation 12.6, and Matthew 24.15 and 16. We're not told the exact date, so 756 to 2016 is only one of many possibilities, and that one is based on a book by a 17th century author named Adam Clark, which cites the donation of Pepin in 756 as the true start of the Holy Roman Empire. You may notice that there were exactly 70 years between the sign of Revelation 12 in 686 and the donation of Pepin in 756 but I don't have that on this chart. Not enough room. Under the Holy Roman Empire, you'll see a black box with white letters that says Pope. That's a reference to 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4, the man of sin who proclaimed himself God in the temple. You'll notice the word translated as temple in that verse means any heathen temple. The Roman Empire finished their temple in Italy in 626, and Pope Leo XIII proclaimed himself to be God in that temple in 1894. The red splatter mark right here says wound, and that is a reference to Revelation 13.3, which says one of the heads of the beast was wounded as if it were dead, but then the deadly wound was healed. The Holy Roman Empire was head 7 and king 6, as explained in Revelation 13 and 17.10. The wound was the defeat of the Holy Roman Empire by Napoleon, which occurred between 1806 and 1870. The healing of the wound occurred in two ways. First, the establishment of the League of Nations, which came to power in 1920 under the guise of maintaining peace, and I abbreviated that here as L-N. And second, the establishment of Vatican City in 1929, which I don't have listed because it's not one of the heads or kings. The League of Nations was King 7, as explained in Revelation 17.10. And down here we have 1920, the year it came to power. And you'll notice that was three years before the Turkish Empire fell. 
So the League of Nations was the rise of the King of Fierce Countenance, as explained in Daniel 8, verses 23 through 25. Up here at the top, we have the feet of iron and clay, as described in Daniel 2, verses 33 and 41. Below that, it says 10 horns, which is a reference to Daniel 7, verses 7 and 24. Under that, it says 10 UN world regions. The United Nations separated the world into 10 regions via the Club of Rome. The United Nations is King 8, as explained in Revelation 17, verses 8 through 11, and it rose in 1945 as a replacement for the League of Nations. Revelation 17, 9 through 11 says, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The five that had fallen were Babylon, Persia, Greece, the Western Roman Empire, and the Eastern Roman Empire. The one that is refers to the beast that is, is not, yet is. This is the head of the beast that was wounded and then healed, which was the Holy Roman Empire. The one that had not yet come was the League of Nations. And when he comes, it says he shall continue a short space. And the League of Nations only existed 25 years, from 1920 to 1945. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven. That is the United Nations. It's telling us that the United Nations is the League of Nations, and both of them are a continuation of the Holy Roman Empire and ultimately a continuation of all the kings since Babylon. Under that, we have the 1335 days in Daniel 1212, which may have started in 685 CE when the abomination was set up. If that's what Daniel referred to, then it will end in the year 2020, using the day for a year principle. The year 2020 is also the 400th year from 1620, which may represent the affliction, as explained in Genesis 15, 13, and Deuteronomy 28 through 30. Notice the affliction involves the Israelites taken as slaves into a land they did not know, a nation that was as swift as the eagle, which is also known as Egypt, which Revelation 11.8 tells us is the symbolic name for the great city, which Revelation 17.5 and 18 tell us is Babylon the Great. Also notice Deuteronomy 29 and 30 make it clear that the return to their homeland does not occur until after the fire and brimstone. The fire and brimstone refers to the meteorite, which is also called the stone. We'll look at that in a minute. Also notice it says some of them will return to their homeland from heaven. So that's a reference to the escape of the bride again. Under the affliction, we have 70 years serving Babylon under 8th king. That is a reference to Jeremiah 25 and Revelation 17 and 18, which refer to the 70-year period in the end time that the nations around Jerusalem will serve Babylon, who we are told sits on the 8th king. The 8th king is the United Nations, which came to power in 1945. But in January and February of 1947, the nations around Jerusalem were given to the United Nations by Britain. And in November of 1947, the United Nations voted to partition Palestine to allow the creation of the State of Israel. And the State of Israel was officially declared a nation in May of 1948. So you'll see here it says, Little Country of Israel which rose up in 1947-1948. That is the little horn, as explained in Daniel 7, verses 8 and 20, Daniel 8, verse 9, and Lamentations 2, verse 3. It is more complicated than that, but if you want to know more about that, watch the video on the little horn. But you will notice that a large percentage of Christians are currently worshiping the little horn, and they are also worshiping the beast. 
which Hosea 13 and Revelation 13 tell us is Yahweh. And what this means is that the governing empires have replaced the true God with a false God that represents their interests. Deuteronomy 31 tells us this replacement occurred in Babylon, and that is confirmed by archaeological records. So the majority of Christians and Jews are worshipping this false god, which has always been the beast since Babylonian times, and now they are also worshipping the little horn. On the line under that, it says fig tree, one generation will not pass. That's a reference to Matthew 24, verses 32 through 34, Hosea 9.10, and Psalm 90.10, which tell us that the fig tree is Israel, one generation will not pass, once Israel puts forth leaves, and one generation can equal 70 to 80 years. You'll notice that also starts between November 1947 and May of 1948, when the nation of Israel was created. Then below that, we have 77, as explained in Daniel 9.24. Keep in mind that the word translated as weeks also means seven. That 77, we are told, starts at the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem, which occurred again between November 1947 and May of 1948. Then below that, you will see 62 Shavuot. That's a reference to Daniel 9.25, which says that from the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem until Messiah, there shall be seven, seven, and 62 Shavuot. Keep in mind that the word translated as weeks means both seven and Shavuot. Shavuot is a biblical feast day that occurs each spring, and since it's referring to a certain number of Shavuot, from the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem between November 1947 and May of 1948, that tells us that we should start counting at the first Shavuot, which occurred in June of 1948. The 7-7 that occurred can refer to seven Shavuot, followed by seven more Shavuot, which ended in 1961, the year Obama was born. Obama was the man the world called Messiah, so that fits. The 62nd Shavuot occurred in 2009, which was the year the man called Messiah stepped onto the world stage as President of the United States. Then this next part here says 1-7 followed by another 1-7. As of 2017, we now know there are two seven-year periods. This is explained in Daniel 9, verses 26 and 27, which says that after 62 Shavuot, Messiah will either be cut off or cut a covenant. That word means both things. The covenant that it seems to refer to is the world covenant of the beast, the Eighth King, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty that almost every country of the world has signed. Obama won the Peace Prize in October through December 2009, precisely because of his promotion of the UN Worldwide Treaty. That confirming of the covenant lasted seven years, from October to December 2009 until October through December 2016, when Trump was elected President of the United States. That makes either Trump or Pence the prince that shall come, and there is no doubt that they will also confirm the covenant with the beast. Of course, the covenant is a peace covenant, which appears benign, but the point here is that this peace covenant is part of the prophecy, and this prophecy states that the destruction will occur in the midst of that seven years, once the covenant is confirmed by the prince that shall come after the man called Messiah. The destruction that it refers to appears to be the stone from heaven. You can see a thick red line that runs from the feet at the top, all the way down to a black box with red letters. The box says, Stars Fall, Burning Stone, Flood. This is a reference to Matthew 24, 29, Revelation 8 and 9, Daniel 2, 34, Daniel 7, 11, Daniel 9, 26, and Revelation 18, 21, which tell us that the feet will be broken by a stone that is cut out without hands. The terrible beast and its ten horns will be destroyed by a burning flame, in other words, a burning stone. 
the king of fierce countenance will be broken without hand, in other words, broken by the stone, the eighth king will go into perdition, the stars will fall immediately after the tribulation of the days, in other words, the tribulation of 1260 days, which are years, Babylon will be destroyed after 70 years and specifically destroyed by a stone from heaven that will hit the sea, which appears to be the flood that Daniel 9.26 tells us will occur in the midst of a seven-year period that occurs after the 62 Shavuot's to Messiah. Daniel 9.26 and 27 say that after 62 Shavuot's, Messiah shall be cut off, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the hallowed thing, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one seven, and in the midst of the seven he shall cause either the Passover and tribute to cease, or the thanksgiving and gift to cease. Look at the meanings of those words. The first seven-year period was from 2009 until 2016. And the second seven-year period will start when Messiah was cut off, November 2016 to January 2017, or when Trump or Pence confirm the covenant with the UN. So the second seven-year period can run from 2016 to 2023, or from 2017 to 2024. The entire Daniel 9 timeline would appear to end in 2024 because Daniel 9.24 says there will be 77 from the commandment to restore 1947-48 until the end of sins. 77 years from 1947 ends in 2024. In this spot, you'll see the 1290 and 1335 days. That's another reference to Daniel 12, 11, and 12. And it's another fulfillment that occurred between the taking of the oath of the man called Messiah on January 20th, 2009, and the setting up of the steel beam that he signed on August 2nd, 2012, in the Idol of Terror. The alternate translation of Daniel 12, 11, and 12 says, From the time the position shall be taken oath and the Idol of Terror set up, there shall be 1290 days. Blessed is he that longs for and reaches for the 1335th day. The 1290 days from the oath to the signed still beam, August 2nd, 2012, and the 1335 days from the oath to the Feast of Trumpets 2012, which was the day the blessed were longing for. Then the sign of Revelation 12 occurred on the ancient Feast of Trumpets a month later on October 16th, 2012. And that was the same celestial configuration that occurred in the sky in 686 CE while they set up the Dome of the Rock. Again, the recent fulfillment of Daniel 12 was secondary to the major fulfillment, which occurred in 685 CE. And that blessed day will not occur until 2020. The green box under that recent fulfillment in 2012 says 2012 NYC Trade Center Third Watch. And that is a reference to Matthew 24, 15, and 29, and Luke 12, 37, and 38. Those events, we're told, will occur before the woman flies, which is explained in Revelation 12, 14. You'll notice there's a blue cloud at the start of the 1260 days that says flee. This references the fleeing of the woman in Revelation 12, verse 6, which represents those in Judea in Matthew 24, 16. Then at the end of the 1260 years, you'll see a blue cloud that says fly. That's a reference to Revelation 12, verse 14, which says the woman will be carried by the wings of an eagle to a place prepared for her from the face of the serpent, and she will stay there for a time, times, and half a time. That time, times, and half a time is also mentioned in Daniel 12, which says those in the book will be delivered at the time of trouble, which will last for a time, times, and half a time. It's also mentioned in Daniel 7.25, where it says the saints shall be in the hand of the little horn for a time, times, and half a time. At the top right, you'll notice it says season and time. This is a reference to Daniel 7.12, which says the beast's lives will be prolonged after that burning flame for a season and a time. Under that, you'll see three and a half years, and under that, 42 months. 
a time times and half a time can equal three and a half years, one time being one year, times representing two years, and half a time representing half a year for a total of three and a half years, which is roughly equal to 42 months. This time period is also referenced in Revelation 13.5, where it says the beast shall continue for 42 months. We're also told in Revelation 17.8 that the beast will ascend out of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit, we are told, is opened by the star that falls from heaven, as explained in Revelation 9. In other words, the United Nations will ascend or rise to power when the stone hits and will continue its rule for 42 months, which is three and a half years. Just below that 42 months, you'll see in blue, holy city in heaven. That's a reference to Revelation 11 verse 2, which says the Gentiles will tread the holy city 42 months. The word translated as Gentiles also means multitude. In Revelation 7 verse 9 explains that the multitude will be taken out of the tribulation and will be standing before the throne in heaven. Revelation 21 explains that the holy city is in heaven. So Revelation 11 is telling us that the great multitude that cannot be counted will be in heaven for 42 months. That is the escape of the bride. It occurs at the end of 1260 days and the start of the final 42 months, and it tells us that they will be in heaven for that three and a half years, and then they will return back to the earth. That's the returning of the bride to their homeland. During that three and a half years of war on the earth, we're told in Revelation 13, 6, that the beast will blaspheme the temple in heaven and those in it. In other words, the beast will blaspheme those who will be rescued. It also says the beast will blaspheme God and the temple itself. So as you can see, we are literally right there at the end of this very complex timeline that has been fulfilling itself for literally thousands of years. And the final seven years appears to be starting now in 2017. And that's why I'm trying to get this out to as many people as possible. As far as I know, there's no other chart like it. You can also print this chart for free on my website, indigoflower.net. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you next week.